One of the writers who I really enjoyed reading when I was younger was Tom Jones. This is a writer who was prominent in the 90s in America as a short story writer. He put out three short story collections. There was The Pugilist at Rest, Cold Snap, and Sonny Liston was a friend of mine. And then he just fell off the face of the earth, and I always wondered what happened to him. Did he get blacklisted? Was he suffering from overwhelming medical conditions? And I read the news today, and I found out that he had passed away last week. He was age 71. Uh, it was complications from diabetes. He was a man who was very interesting. He was an ex-Marine. He didn't actually go to Vietnam. I think he suffered from a head injury because he was a boxer and he got hit so hard that it kind of gave him a little bit of brain damage and it's, so he suffered from epilepsy, diabetes, I think he became an alcoholic, uh, but he was always reading and writing. He went to uh, University of Iowa, in fact, in the 70s, and he studied with Raymond Carver. Carver had given him the advice that if you want to be a writer, you want to pick a job that doesn't really take too much out of you. Maybe something part-time to where you can kind of have some downtime and spend that, you know, with your writing or thinking about your writing. And he took that advice. He uh, he became a high school janitor at some point. One of the short stories was placed in The New Yorker, and then from there he just rose to literary fame. But, um, yeah, that was kind of a tagline at the time, marketing thing, where it's like, hey, here's this janitor who is a rising literary star. But he was a very tormented man, and I think his father committed suicide, so he kind of shared that uh, that demon with, uh, with Hemingway. Like the first part right here, this deals with stories in the Vietnam War. I Want to Live is very notable because it's from the perspective of a woman dying of cancer. White Horse was interesting. He puts a lot of characters who are very thoughtful and philosophical um, into his short stories. They're kind of having the same type of demons that he had as well as this, you know, over-testosterone machoism thing that they're trying to contend with, thinking also about Nietzsche and uh, Schopenhauer. I just found him interesting as a case study. This was a time before you could really come up with a, your own audience and start a groundswell underground, you know, with other social media. This guy did it straight cold turkey, and he got lucky with The New Yorker, and he took the fast train just straight up. It was always fun to follow along with uh, newer writers' careers. I, that's how I got hooked into Haruki Murakami, George Saunders. Uh, I don't know if anyone remembers this uh, magazine back in the day. This is like a reboot of uh, a very prominent national magazine back in the 40s, I think. Um, they kind of rebooted it for the 90s, and uh, I remember Tom Jones appeared in this issue. His characters just spoke in an extremely loud voice. It was almost like your every everyday beat down man like sitting down next to you in a bar and he just kind of rants about his life and it just seemed like the opposite of the short stories at the time which were just so polished you know with this literary veneer and yet his stories had this underlying structure that respected those kind of literary things he knew what he was doing but it was this rough edge to his story his loud voiced characters and it just sort of a tumbled working edge to a story that I really enjoyed. And there was a couple of writers that actually did that too. Rick Bass did that in a couple of his short stories early. Richard Ford kind of feels that way. Maybe some Barry, Barry Hanna. Murakami was in this. Story was a good magazine because, you know, if you, if you have access to a library that has back issues of story, you can go really far back. They first published John Cheever. They first published Norman Mailer. I remember digging up the issue where Norman Mailer appeared in print for the first time. One thing I remember doing with this guy was I would communicate with him via email. Like this was a time when email was just taking off and if I found out that a writer had an email address I would start writing him. You know the the whole sequence would usually be like hey I like your stories you know and just kind of discuss it and they would write back and we discussed their work and then at some point I would flip it and just say hey can you read one of my stories? <laughs> and at that point they usually turn tail and run. Um, I never got that far with Tom Jones. It's, it's kind of interesting. But I did that with um, Kevin Canty, uh, Michael Shabon, Brian Evanson was one I communicated with. He was very nice. Um, and Tom Jones. Tom Jones, I wrote to him and I was like, hey man, I like your stories. And then he wrote me, like usually they only write back a couple sentences, but he wrote me like this long page. Like I'm a to I was a total stranger to him. And he was telling me all his problems, like, yeah, I just moved from Olympia, Washington to uh, the University of Iowa. I'm never going to do that again. And it's like all this stuff. 
and I was kind of taken aback actually I was like whoa um, and I just kind of let it fizzle <laughs> I thought it was cool though I thought it was really cool yeah gonna miss this guy rest in peace buddy